today is a job that I've wanted to kind of get onto for a while, and that is to do with the position of our boot line, our water line. So at the moment it is here, and the problem with that is that the, that line is put on by the boat yard when the boat is launched, before it is laden. Now that basically means that once we've got the tanks full, once we've got the diesel tanks full, once we've got all our belongings on board, the boat sits lower in the water than uh, that line. So to plan today, we are here. There is a natural, a natural uh, kind of like line there, which I think we're going to use that line. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring that uh, that water line length up. We're going to anti foul about two inches higher, and that will basically mean that over the course of the season, we're not losing speed to anvil growth. Uh, so the boat is all masked up. Next thing is this. This is Gel Shield 2000, or two, Gel Shield 200. It's a one tenth of the 2000. Um, Super expensive, but super good, and it is meant to be the best on the market. So basically, it is an anti-osmosis epoxy primer. Not that there's anything to do with osmosis, it's just that it is a, the best sealant we could find for that extra two inches. So epoxy paste primer, two parts, mix them two together, mix them well. Then you've got a working set time, which is temperature dependent. I'd like to think it probably goes off within an hour. That's what normally happens in about, it's probably in the sun, about 22, 23 degrees. We'll get that extra two inches done. And then that's the work done for today, apart from a few other little bits and bobs. So on with that. So back again, um, I want to talk to you very briefly about anti-foul. Um, while I'm here, I've got my non-alcoholic beer for lunch, which is uh, very nice actually. Um, now, the epoxy priming has been done and I now need to move on to the subject of anti-fouling. The reason I'm giving you this little spiel inside is that there's a chap outside blaring out some quite attractive Spanish Euro pop and I'm not sure that you'll uh, either hear or um, find it conducive to listening. So anti found in this afternoon. Now, for those of you that don't know, anti-fouling is a biocide coating of paint that you paint onto the hull of your boat and it stops marine growth from attaching itself. It is really, really useful and everyone really needs it. Now, anti-fouling is really specific to the cruising area that you are going to be in. Now, all I would suggest to you is if you are in the Mediterranean, find someone that knows about what is best. It may not always be the Chandler. Do some internet research. We have cruised Northern European waters. We're now in the Mediterranean. We've cruised the Caribbean and we've cruised America. So we've gone through four different areas and we go and do the research on the anti -foul. So for what we want to use, I think when we were in West Marine, you know, my favorite Chandra in all the world, um, I just talked to someone and they just said, look, the heavier the tin, the better it is. The more kind of ingredients in there that kind of help to prevent um, kind of bacter uh, not bacterial um, growth on your hull. So uh, we reached out to uh, Jason um, at International Paints and said, listen, you know, what do you recommend? And he said, well, use Micron. Now we used to use Micron uh, years ago and it, it is a good product. It's expensive for what it is, but it does the job. And so we are gonna put two coats of that on. I tend to put two coats on um, most of the hull and three coats on the rudders and at the waterline. Now, Talking to an expert on anti-foul, believe it, there are such things. It is interesting to find out that these little things exist. And this is um, a wet film thickness gauge, which I've never heard of them before, but it is essentially lots of little notches in the side of each of them. And essentially if you scrape, the, um, scrape this across the wet film, it will tell you how thick your uh, your anti foul is. So this is actually a, a, a far, it's a basic but very clever method of getting the right thickness of anti foul on your boat. So we're going to get ahead and do that, make sure that we've got that all sorted out while it is sunny this afternoon. Now a couple of other things I do want to mention when it comes to anti foul. Number one, it is a biocide. So it is harmful to marine life and you can get some really, really potent anti fouls especially in the Caribbean. We found one brand that is actually is illegal to use in US waters good as it, because it is so harmful. So you do really need to consider what you're doing to the environment. You know, protection of coral reefs, protection of marine life is really, really important. So try and find a balance between, you know, something that, you know, will kill any marine life within a hundred meters and something which doesn't work. So again, do 
your research, but find one that is approved for use in kind of coastal waters and, uh, you know, doesn't do more damage than it does good. That's the first thing. We get a lot of questions about copper coat, copper bottoms, you know, using a copper based anti foul on our, our hull. Now, this is for those of you again that are not in the know, it is a different system. You have to strip all the anti foul off, and it's quite difficult to apply. It has to be applied professionally, but you put that on, and it means that really, I think, I think it lasts 10 years. There's a 10 year guarantee, so you never need to anti foul in 10 years. Brilliant, you say, why don't we all use this? A couple of reasons. Number one, it is fiendishly expensive. Compared to normal anti-foul, um, it's probably five to ten times more because firstly it costs a lot more, secondly you have to have it done professionally and we tend to do all the work ourselves. Second reason, we are a lifting keel and we dry out. Now drying a boat out you can damage the copper coat if you kind of land the boat in, um, you know, on rocks and god knows what. So um, it really is prudent when something is so expensive to try and obviously not damage it. Number three, and this is the most important reason, we used to be on a drying mooring. Now, as we dried, we sat in mud and that mud coated the uh, bottom of the boat and essentially copper coat was useless on a drying mooring. So be aware that if you're going to go down that route, amazing, doesn't suit everyone and that didn't suit us. And that is the basics of anti -file. I'll get on and get those coats done this morning over the, into this afternoon and then hopefully that will be done. So. Yeah, pretty pleased with our work so far. So the epoxy's been done, the epoxy layers above the, the boot line. That's number one, the propeller's been serviced. Again, I've just done a visual check of everything down to the kind of the, the skin fittings, the, uh, the, the the log wheel to make sure it's turning freely. It's just about getting all this stuff done and making sure that you're happy that when your boat launches back into the water at the beginning of the season, you have looked at everything and not missed anything. Anyway, I'm going to have my lunch and I'll be back later to show you the interesting, if not informative, process of anti -fire. I dare you dig a little deeper It makes you feel a little stronger Who knows what you may find You'll see in your own time It might just take a little longer it all goes by so slowly Ooh, you waited your whole life Your days turn into nights Now let the river flow Deep into the ocean all the time you go You are moving with emotion Let the river so that is it. A technical Tuesday on anti fan and preparing your boat for being dropped back in the water. So just to recap, we cleaned the hull with a power washer. We scraped the hull to remove all barnacles, kind of debris, bits of weed. We then, because we weren't happy with the position of the boot stripe, we added a two inch, uh, we extended the boot, the, the waterline by two inches using a, a special anti-osmotic um, base coat primer and then three coats of anti foul in the high traffic areas and two coats all over so pretty happy with that she goes back in the water tomorrow morning we're really excited about our new season so there you go um, more technical Tuesdays coming on all the things we are gonna be doing to get our boat ready to sail around the Mediterranean and beyond thanks very much